what's up guys this is ts football broadcast here bringing you a video on my thoughts on the collective bargaining agreement passing um first the 17 game season i think 23 they're going to go up to 18 which i don't like they need two bye weeks if they're going to do that and the records are going to be all screwy now i think the balance of eight and eight was perfect um now we don't have to bounce at eight and eight, which kind of sucks. Um, the base salary bumps up for players. I do like that. Um, the seven seed playoff. Um, I think it's going to be a gateway to the eight, same like seven to eight. You know, I think it's just going to be. I I it, it just feels off to me. Like only once he gets a buy, which I think will bring you more competition. But then you're getting a team like. Um, I mean, this year wouldn't have been so bad. I mean, they wouldn't really want to see the Steelers or the Rams in the playoffs, though. I mean, no. I mean, there are some years where it's like, it would have been really bad to have the seven seed system. Like that year, the seven and nine Seahawks made the playoffs. I don't think that would have been good. <laughs> God, I still can't believe that that team made the playoffs. And that was almost 10 years ago. Anyway. The preseason is going to be shorter when they enact the 17 games, which the window's 2021 and 2023 to enact that. I like that because the fourth preseason game is completely just... Fourth preseason game is never good. Um, they kill, They're killing the Wii policy, essentially. They're neutering it. Um, I think that's great for players. I mean, hey, smoke weed every day outside of that, like, month window you can't. I mean... It's pretty good for pain from what I hear, so that's always good. Uh, the roster size increases from 53 to 55. I love that because more opportunities. Game day also goes from 46 to 48, and practice squads, I believe, go from 10 to 14 or 10 to 12. So I, I'm just sitting here like, yes, more opportunities for more players. That is one thing I'm for. Um, in addition, the players' revenue split went from 47 to 48. I believe it will go to 48.5 if the some, when the 17 games is enacted. Now, I believe this is about as good as it's going to get. The owners are never going to give them that 50-50 split that on um, the... I think it's the NHL that has that. <laughs> They're never going to get that. They'll get the NFL sub at 49.9999. So this won't give up the leverage. <clears throat> Anyway, so that is my thoughts on the collective bargaining agreement. This video is way shorter than I thought it was. Nope, we're not having a video this short uploaded. We are going to talk about franchise tags. Because this is being recorded after the first day of free agency. I'll make a video on that um, later. There's like two videos on that. One's going to be Browns and one's going to be the rest of the league. So we're going to talk about tags real quick for the league. Um, the Cardinals placed a transition tag on Kenyon Drake um, with the trade of David Johnson, which I will cover later. Oh, my God. I still can't believe they did that. Holy crap. That is such a dumb move for the Texans. I think it's risky but good because if they get a big offer, it's going to be like don't match it. I also think Kenyon Drake. Oh, Kiki Bears guy running back. Um, next, Ravens maintain Monster Man Matt Judon. He fits the scheme well. I mean, he could be on the uptake. I mean, he's also a big, strong linebacker, which helps him out. Big, strong linebacker. Bengals have tagged AJ Green. I don't know. I think he might be gone after this season. I think. He, I mean, that culture is losing. I don't think Joe Burrow's gonna fix it. And Green's probably sitting here like. Bollocks. Um, Dallas tag Dak Prescott. It's the right move. I mean, it's like, let's see what Mike McCarthy does with him. Um, also, I think Dak is pricing himself way too high. Denver Broncos tagged Justin Simmons. He's a top five safety. Um, I think Vic Fangio is using him as a building block to the new no-fly zone, which this team's going to contend pretty soon, I think, with the pieces if they perform. They're going to be a They're going to be competing. Hopefully not for number one picks, though. The Jacksonville Jaguars tag Yannick Ngakwe. Um, it, it's probably going to be a tag and trade. I mean, this team's pretty much screwed now. I mean, they're in a lengthy rebuild at this point. I mean, it's like they sent out most of Saxonville. Um, 
they got awful cap situation. And then Gardner Macy's just sitting here like, I am the only thing keeping this franchise relevant. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, the Jaguars, they're done. I mean, they might as well just send everything out because they are in hell for a cap situation. Whew. 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 Man, I'm tired. Anyway, um, the Chiefs tagged Chris Jones. He was a huge reason that defense turned around and they won the Super Bowl. I mean, he's disruptive and explosive. I don't think it's a tag trade. I think they're going to sign him after Patrick Mahomes signs, so they kind of have already other cap situation. Chargers tag Hunter Henry. If he's healthy, he's a top five tight end, so I think he's worth it. It's like, yeah, I can see you guys tagging him. I think he's, there's only about five or six times that we got tagged, and he's definitely one. Well, he, yeah, he's definitely one of them. Uh, Badgers tag Joe Th Thune. I think it's kind of moved to keep the line together and appeal to Brady. And um, this morning, there have been many tweets saying he is not going back to New England. Which means, fuck yeah. I'm, I'm really happy he's not going back to New England. I, I, can't, I don't know if I want to see him fail or not. I kind of do just because I'm very um, jaded, but you know. Moving on, the Giants tag Leonard Williams. I mean, they pretty much had to. The long deal, they they traded a lot of picks for it, but it's like if they got didn't get a long t term deal done, they had the franchise tag him. He's really good too, so it's not like it's a wasted franchise tag. It's like, okay, he's not like gonna be like Aaron Donald and Philip Dasachi, but he's probably one of the better three four D ends in the league. I mean, he's he's pretty good defensive end. Um, the Steelers tag Bud Dupree. Um, he kind of popped last year. But will he be good next year? Turn a contract because it's like one year deal. The Bucks tag Shaq Barrett. I think he deserves a three to five year deal. Now you could use he could be a one hit wonder, but in Denver he wasn't exactly awful. So I think the I think he should have gotten a multi year deal, and he probably would have lived up to it as long as it wasn't Aaron Donald money. Nineteen point five sacks last year though. Whew. Um, Titans da tagged Derrick Henry with how running backs are. I mean, he was unstoppable after the bye week, but of course, running backs are probably going to break down soonish. I will have actually signed him to a two year deal personally. Like, nothing more than a two or three year deal. Preferably a two year deal. Like, I would have paid him bank, but it's like, okay, two years. If it goes south, okay, it's not a huge deal type deal. Now they they could jag the Titans in general could pull a Jacksonville Jaguars and regress with keeping the pieces, or they could actually be really good next year. That is what we may see. Lastly, on the franchise tags, the Redskins tag Brandon Sheriff. He's a very good interior lineman. Um, they really couldn't have afforded to let him go. I mean, he's just, ugh. or the Redskins are, ugh, he's good. But I don't think they could have afforded to let him go. Anyway, guys, thank you all for watching. Like, comment, subscribe. Have a nice day, and Twitter in the description below, and goodbye.